Welcome to the Dr. Dad's Podcast, where a naturopath and chiropractor come together each week to share lifestyle medicine, health advice, and inspiring interviews with some of the top experts in health and wellness, bringing you the latest in nutrition, exercise, ancient healing, toxins and detox, your microbiome, mindset, hormones, brain, and much more. Stay tuned. We're going to teach you how to experience growth daily. Hey everybody, Dr. Dad's coming at you today. Today I have a great guest coming on, one of my mentors who's taught me how to really get my wizard skills on point. You guys will get that joke in a second. Nick, how are you, brother? Doing fantastic, buddy. Good here. Good to be here and really looking forward to listening to what Dr. Jim has to say today. Well, we have one of our brothers in wellness, Dr. James Bentz, on today. And uh, before we get started with, with Dr. Benz, I really want to give a little bio on him real quick uh, and talk. Uh, today, I'm excited because today we're going to get into NIS or it's called Neurological Integration System. And James, uh, Dr. Benz is a master at this and uh, he's actually the one that's been teaching me and we're going to get into the nitty gritty of what that's all about and how it can help, uh, how it helps many people and, uh, and see if it can possibly help you. And for any docs listening, this may be a potential technique that you want to add to your tool bag, uh, really to just help more individuals that walk through the office. So let's get into it. Uh, James Benz graduated from Palmer College of Chiropractic in Davenport, Iowa, summa cum laude in 1984, and was inducted into the International Chiropractic Honor Society. He holds a BA degree in biology and conservation from the University of Wisconsin-Madison. Uh, he's been in private practice in Washington State since 1985. Uh, he is the author on an article on x-ray accuracy analysis published in the Journal of Manipulative and Physical Therapy in 1985. And in 1996, he was board certified in clinical nutrition through the International Academy of Applied Clinical Nutrition. Pretty snazzy, Jim. I didn't know. Right? Uh, <laughs> Dr. Benz has been the North American trainer for the Neurological Integration System since 2013. Uh, NIS is a system of healthcare based in a neuroscience and Dr. Benz has trained hundreds of practitioners since 2013, including myself, uh, MDs, DOs, acupuncturists, NDs, occupational and physical therapists. NIS has been under development by Alan Phillips DO since 1989, and it allows practitioners to detect and correct signaling disruption in the brain and between the brain and the body, thereby optimizing neurological, immune, and physiological function. Uh, Dr. Betts has been raising awareness about the role of the brain in healthcare and NIS trainer for several years, and Dr. Pompa just recently interviewed him on Cell TV, and he talked about NIS, so we're glad to have you, Jim. How are you, man? I, I'm great, and it's, I, I got to say it's just a, a treat to be on with you guys today, so... Yeah, this is going to be a blast. I mean, I get to hang out with you in little bits throughout the year at the big conferences, but it was a pleasure this year getting to hang with you at both NIS modules and getting to learn more of that craft from you and your mastery. And, and like I say, Dr. Benz is a master. Jim, how long have you been doing and practicing NIS? Uh, that, I've been doing that since 1997, so a little over 20, about 22 years, David. Awesome. And so I want to start... Um, how did you, you've, you've told me this story, but I want our listeners to hear, how did you find your way to NIS and, and what were you doing before you, you started doing neurological integration? Yeah. Um, you know, there's actually a little more, and if, if you've got a few minutes, there's a little more backstory I'd like to share about this. Um, sure. So I was really fortunate uh, in that I grew up in a, in a pretty health conscious family. Uh, my dad was a dentist. And he was pretty forward thinking. He, he was one of the first uh, dentists to start uh, actually removing amalgams the proper way. He, was, uh, he studied with, as a matter of fact, he was one of Hal Huggins' first students. And Dr. Huggins was the one that pioneered uh, proper amalgam removal. Oh, wow. I uh, yeah, so this was back in the 60s. And I remember when he came home from that, uh, when he came home from his first uh, weekend uh, at that, and uh, he had gotten there because he was using mercury amalgams. And then um, he got this notice from the OSHA, and it said, it told him all about how he had to dispose of mercury because it was so damn toxic, right? And he goes, well, wait a minute, I'm putting this in people's mouths, you know? So he found Dr. Huggins, long story short, I remember he took all his kids 
I, I'm oldest of nine kids, but he took us all down to the office one by one and took our, all our amalgam fillings out and put gold, uh, gold uh, leaf fillings in, and which I still, they're still holding up to this day, like 50 years later. Right. Um, and, and, but he was really, uh, they were very um, conscious about like what they fed us. Like we didn't get, we didn't get a lot of sugar. We, we never got like soda to drink in our family. Um, matter of fact, my mom, one of our jobs was to go, uh, go down in the basement and, and hand grind wheat berries, organic wheat berries, so she could bake, you know, whole wheat bread. Oh, so wow. I was really lucky to grow up in that, in that environment. My dad was really a pioneer with using nutritional supplements as a dentist, right? He actually got called up for practicing medicine without a license because, uh, which didn't stick, but they were, you know, the MDs in town were like, well, who is this guy? You know, like their patients would go back, back to them and they'd say, um, you know, I saw this dentist and he put me on these supplements and I'm, I just feel a lot better. It's like, why don't you guys know about this? <laughs> right? So anyway, he was a bit of a he was a bit of a rebel, and I think he instilled some of that in me. Um, but uh, I I started chiropractic college in in 1981, and I did, I graduated in '84, and I was the, here's the thing that really appealed to me about chiropractic, and it was the philosophy of chiropractic, which is that there's there's an innate intelligence in the body. Now, for those of you who aren't chiropractors, uh, innate intelligence means this is the intelligence that runs the body. I mean, you don't think about digesting the food that you ate for breakfast, and you don't think about increasing your heart rate when you've got to run up a set of stairs. That's all done automatically, right? Mm -hmm. And that's the intelligence that we're talking about. And the idea being that that intelligence is really where what runs the body and what heals the body as well. Right. And that always appealed to me. And then, you know, when I, when I started my practice and I was doing, like you say, David, I was doing just structurally based adjustments, right. Which is, you know, that's what I learned. And, um, at, at, at times it was really frustrating to me. I mean, people felt better, uh, with that, but I, one of the things that was frustrating to me was that I kept seeing people come back with the same thing. Like I was adjusting their neck over and over and over again. And that, that was, a that was a bit of a concern for me. It's like, well, what's going on here that I have to keep doing this to this patient over and over again. And I realized pretty quickly that, that I hadn't been well equipped in my chiropractic education to address a lot of the lifestyle issues that I, that people came in with like, you know, terrible diets and uh, how they manage their stress. And uh, you guys know, I mean, you deal with this every day, but I didn't feel like I'd been really well equipped for that. So I just started, I started doing some study in, in nutrition and functional medicine, which is why then I got my, you know, clinical, nutritionist certification and then in 1997 i uh i got a um a flyer came across my my desk now you met dr roberts at the seminar <laughs> randy's a real character but he he actually somehow he got my name off a list of people i think it was through uh, I used to do something called contact reflex analysis as Dr. Dick Versendahl. It's a kinesiology based technique. And, but anyway, I, I remember it was like, he just photocopied it and sent it out. Right? And uh, usually I'd toss those things right in the, in the trash, but it sat on my desk for, Oh, I don't know, two or three weeks. And something told me I, I was supposed to go. It was like, I supposed to go do this. So, uh, it was down in Las Vegas and I flew down there for the weekend and um, the Dr. Phillips would fly over at that time from New Zealand. That's a 17 hour flight one way, right? He'd fly over to teach seminars over here. And, um, and, and I knew nothing about it. I, 
I, I just was going on what Randy had put out in the flyer, but it sounded intriguing to me. And uh, the first, the first day of the seminar, I got to say, I, I thought, what is this? Because basically the correction in NIS, as you know, David, is just this little, we call it integration. It's just a little tap on the head. And I'm going, now how in the world could that make a difference for anybody, right? I was actually pretty skeptical the first day of the seminar. I thought, what have I gotten myself into here? Maybe it's just another lost weekend, you know. But um, the second day of the seminar, and I'll give you a little story on this. So I had always, I had for years had chronic, chronic uh, uh, low back and right sacroiliac pain. And when it would get bad, I'd get sciatic pain shooting down my leg. And it was to the point where uh, chiropractic was not, matter of fact, it felt worse after I would get adjusted. I'd get a chiropractic adjustment. At first, it would give me some relief. As a matter of fact, that's one of the reasons I got into chiropractic is that a chiropractor was able to help me with that way long time ago, right? But it was getting less and less effective at controlling that low back and sciatic pain. And so the second day of the seminar, uh, Dr. Phillips called me up, and I don't even remember, it was 22 years ago, but he did whatever he did. And I remember getting off the table, and it was like, oh my gosh, the pain is gone. Hmm. It had been there for like 15 years, right? I was like, well, this is interesting. <laughs> and so uh, uh, I went back and I started using. Uh, started using this on my patients and we started to see some pretty cool changes with people. So uh, at that time, I really didn't understand it to the degree that I do now, but uh, I started using it. I was still using other, other, uh, other techniques as well. So um, uh, that was kind of my introduction to NIS. And I, uh, about five years after that, I switched over to that as my primary uh, modality of care. Jim, if you, if you could describe what you, now that you've gone through this experience and you've had you've all, all, this, uh, all these years behind you, why, why do you think chiropractic hit a limitation and nutrition, all the things that you were diving into, and what was, what was actually going on for you in that experience uh, now that you can reflect back? Well, I think um, it just seemed always seemed to me that there was more to uh, health and healing than than um, than just doing spinal adjustments. And look, I'm not discounting that in any way. It's it's it can be pretty powerful uh, modality for people, um, but um, I wasn't really seeing the consistent. Uh, resolution of symptoms or problems that people were having. And I also realized that uh, there, was, there was more to uh, health and healing, and especially in the, uh, the area of like uh, emotional well-being, right? Mm -hmm. that, that was a big part that was, at, at least for me at that time, was being uh, ignored, uh, or at least it wasn't up on my radar. Uh, and, and NIS began to give me some understanding of, of how these emotional states actually affected us physically. And, uh, and as I've learned more about that, I've come to see that, that, that the, that's all based on the brain and how the brain works. I mean, we know that there's we have in the brain this area called the limbic system, right? That's the emotional center of the brain that has a powerful, powerful influence on, on our health and our ability to heal. Uh, if you're familiar with Bruce Lipton's work, he's talked about this a lot, uh, you know, how these emotional states can actually turn on bad genes, right? And I know you guys have seen this. I see it. And I'm, you know, since I've been working with Dan, I'm, I'm much more tuned into that now. It's like when patients tell me their story and they say, you know, I was fine until 
I went through a divorce. I was fine until, you know, uh, I had, I got, I got this, I got the flu and, and I've never been the same since, or I was fine until I had a, this physical trauma and it just, my health would just started going downhill after that. Well, those are all events that are recorded in the brain and that are continuing to have a very negative impact on people's health. So to begin to understand that picture was a real game changer for me. So, mm. You know, it's interesting, Jim. You know, as chiropractors, you and me, and I, I believe we both had probably similar philosophy taught to us, is in school we're taught about the three T's, right? Toxins, yeah. traumas, and thoughts. Yeah. Yeah, and, yeah. And you get out of school, and then you realize – Oh, wow. They only armed me with addressing the structural aspect of this, but here they are teaching me that there's a biochemical or, or there's a toxin effect that causes subluxation, right? Or there's the emotional component, the mental aspect. And even though we're taught the philosophy that that's what's causing it, we're only really armed with the tools coming out of school to address that structural thing. Yeah. So I think it'd be good to talk a little bit about how NIS helps cover the other T's that we can't really just get with the adjustment as a chiropractor. Yeah. Well, let's, let's talk a little bit about some of the basics, the basic principles of NIS. And, and so the one thing that, that I, it took me a while to really grasp this, but um, unlike the spinal adjustment, NIS isn't really an intervention. In other words, we're not doing something to the body. What we're looking at is how can we uh, detect breakdowns in communication between the brain and the body through the nervous system, right? And we, I mean, basically the whole, the whole body should be running pretty automatically, like I said at the beginning, right? So we don't think about digesting our food or, or, you know, raising our heart rate when we need to, that all happens automatically. Um, but certain things like traumas and emotions and certainly toxins, infections, these are things that can all disrupt that communication between the brain and the body. And so NIS is really a system of detecting where that, you know, Dr. Phillips uses the term a signaling breakdown, where those signals not only from the brain to the body, from the, but from also from the body back to the brain, right? Because the whole body really works on signaling, whether it's a nerve impulse or a, a hormone or a neurotransmitter. You know, all, it's all information, right? And so that's what the body runs on is that information. Now, the brain coordinates all that, kind of like the conductor of a symphony coordinating all the instruments, but... Uh, we in, in NIS were really looking at the whole whole picture of how how this signaling is occurring and where it's broken down and and then being able to understand why it's broken down, right? Well, and I love that I love that aspect of NIS that we're not intervening. You know, I, I tell my patients we're just mediating. Yeah, we're, we're really just stepping in to do the work that the brain is asking us to do, right? Yeah. Yeah, Dr. Phillips says it's 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 uh, it's just the the problem is that we're not often asking the right question of the brain and body. The brain is it's amazing, and you've seen now, David. You've been doing this for a while, but you've seen how how the brain will give you that information, mm -hmm. and it, it's amazing how how accurate it is and. You know, one of the first one of the first things that really uh, validated this for me was the fact that it worked on babies and animals, right? So I knew it wasn't a placebo thing, right? Oh yeah, because we used it on my dogs. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> Amazing results on dogs on my I dogs, know. and they don't they don't understand the placebo effect at all. No, so that to me was really a validation that would that would that that. Uh, that NIS was on to something. Um, and so, uh, you know, when you can restore that signal, when you can restore that communication, restore that automatic function of the body, 
uh, just through a simple raising of basically raising the awareness of the nervous system. Uh, it's pretty cool what happens. And so, well, and to speak to something you were saying earlier, you know, you, we go in as chiropractors and it can get disheartening after a while when you're adjusting and adjusting and adjusting yes. and like nothing is holding. Yeah. One of the biggest things that I, that I saw, not just as a patient getting this done and having this work done to me, but doing it now to my patients and clients is when you start sprinkling NIS in to let's say just structural care, you see this massive change in like yeah. these subluxations don't come back. They like exactly. disappear. I know. So for a chiropractor, for me, this is like, you'd be, it'd be ridiculous not to have this in your tool bag as a chiropractor because our job is to remove subluxation. And if you don't have tools that are getting to this deeper picture at the brain, like you say, I love that story you tell about how you touch the hair on the head. You know, I've I've been doing applied kinesiology for probably 12 years. And when I finally talked to you and you explained to me what NIS was before I started doing this, you're like, it's pretty much you're just mapping the brain instead of the body and the brain's telling you what to do. That made complete sense to me because that's where everything has to take place at the brain. Right. Yeah, it's just neural. Really, we're just getting feedback from the body, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, it's amazing what, what will happen when you can just get those signals restored. And like you said, that was the thing that impressed me about it when I first started using it was the fact that yeah, I wasn't, uh, I wasn't having to go in and, and do, do these manipulations. Now, I didn't just go cold turkey off doing structural work. Uh, but, you know, I keep coming back to uh, now, after doing this for 22 years, seeing that uh, even, even, even what we call the spinal subluxation, right, it's a, it's a, and, and, and there are chiropractors who are talking about this, that it is a neurological phenomenon. It's not a bone out of place, right? I mean, uh, it's, it's happening for a reason. Mm-hmm. And what's really interesting to me is oftentimes the body is doing that as a compensatory thing to some other stressor, right? So, you know, one of the things I think I shared this story, like one of the, one of my patients that I used to do, I used to adjust him all the time as the only way he could function. Uh, When we, when I learned NIS, I realized he had a colon problem. That's why his low back was hurting him all the time. And when we got his colon functioning again, his low back pain went away. And I just started wondering as man, how many patients am I beating away on their spine when the problem is somewhere else? This is where, you know, We've got really all sorts of subluxations. We, you can have a vis, we might call it a visceral subluxation, right? Where an organ is the problem. And we all learned this in school, these, you know, visceral somatic reflexes, but th- they really didn't tell us what to do about them. <laughs> right. No, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. If I could jump here in just a sec, because I'm just thinking of uh, what patients are thinking or people just listening or thinking when they're, when they're, when they're hearing this stuff, because you hit on a couple of really important points. Well, many, but ones that stuck out for me was that there's nothing bad going on when your body's in a pain process. It's, it's an exactly. adjustment. It's a compensation. So we need to pay attention to that. And this whole visceral somatic, so organ to, to body communication system, often for people they'll come in and say, my neck hurts. And maybe a structural based chiropractor or massage therapist will just focus on the neck. And what you're saying is, is that chronic pain is probably coming from a different signaling mechanism. It's just sending referral pain there. So those people are listening, you know, don't just focus on where the pain's coming from. You got to look deeper. And and this is a tool that they're describing here. That's allowing direct communication from the brain to the body and, and interfacing this entire complexity of, of this physical form to give this feedback that, that is so important that they can actually not just adjust a pain point, but actually get to the reason for why that, that signal is there to begin with. It's, it's fascinating stuff. I I think that's a great point, Nick, because, um, you know, we, we become, and I think, you know, 
we're all kind of guilty of this to a degree. I and mean, we want our patients, we want to alleviate pain for our patients, right? I mean, that's what they're coming to see us for. But, you know, until we can nail down the, the, the real source of the pain, we're mm-hmm. going to be ineffective, right? And, uh, you know, one of the things that's cool about NIS is that they've been, he, Dr. Phillips has been able to correlate a lot of structural things back to organs or other areas in the body, right? Um, so uh, what, and this, this comes out of some of the, ac- uh, you know, acupuncture world, right? Where um, every organ has certain muscles associated with it, right? And David, just, you've been doing this long enough now, you've seen that correlation, how accurate it is, right? And, uh, you know, uh, so for instance, you know, in my patient that had low back pain, well, the, all those big back muscles like the erector muscles and the the um, the hamstrings the glutes the quadratus muscles all have connections to the large intestine right so um uh once you begin to see that picture it's a much more holistic way of seeing the body which which i really like it really started to for me bring a lot of the questions I had into, into a little bit better focus. And then, you know, with, with the work that we do with, with Dr. Pampa, that really is, that's really just been like icing on the cake uh, Mm -hmm. for me. And because uh, knowing when you've got a a real toxicity problem that they, the patient needs some help, help with. Right. But that's the beauty of, of NIS. It really helps you in the analysis and the understanding of what's going on with your patients. So. Well, I love that you talked about the analysis because when you go through the work, you know, you, you said it, Jim, it, the, the work tells you a story when you're taking the person through the system. Yeah. And, it, and for the patient, it's awesome because as you're finding these things, you're finding these these signaling dysfunctions, you're able to kind of map out and tell the patient, are you having problems with this? Yeah. Is this something that you have going on? And then they look at you on the table like, how does he know this stuff? And all, all, honestly, all we're doing, like you're saying, is we're just we're challenging the brain and it's telling us, yes, I have a problem here. Yes, I have a problem here. Yes, yeah. I have a problem here. And as you map the body, it speaks to everything the patient is actually dealing with on the table. And they look at you like, Oh my God. I mean, I've had patients cry on me mm-hmm. because they're like, you're the first person that's been able to show me that there actually is something wrong here when all these other doctors are telling me I'm crazy. Yeah. And, and that right there, I mean, it's just, it's worth the work in itself, but it's so neat to be able to find, like you're saying, you're almost able to adjust the lens, right? Yeah. And look a little deeper on things that people, like you're saying, well, I just came in with neck pain. Well, is it really just a structural thing where you have neck pain or is there something deeper going on of why we have this neck pain? I love the example you gave with the low back. You know, Dr. Phillips likes to say, like you're saying, that our, our glands, our organs are the interface to our muscles and our muscles give us our structural integrity. So how many people are walking around and they're having back pain or hip pain or knee pain or whatever and they think it's structural in nature and that's so far from the truth. You know, to, to second your story about the whole colon, I had a client come in. We challenged, you know, L3 to the colon. It's his colon. It has nothing to do with structure. I put him on some supplementation to support his colon. Comes back the next week. His back pain's gone. And he's holding it L3. I mean, it's that fast once you get yeah. to the cause of why they're having those issues. Can, can you guys speak to, to this in a little more detail? Because I think that colon and uh like the the visceral somatic relationship is so important and i'm thinking of how many people you know look at digestive dysfunction and go uh you know i just got to change my diet everything's going to magically correct itself and you know they do the dietary change uh and and but the lingering back pain still is there and is it because there's still this chronic innervation supply communication to that area that just needs to be corrected and and on top of that is this why, you know, dogs can get out of whack too? Because it's not like they're eating all the crappy food that we are. You know, maybe speak to how this crossover happens and um, how sometimes it's not just enough just to change your diet. Right. I mean, I, I know I've seen that repeatedly with patients. 
or the, the other one is where the patient comes in and you go over their diet with them and they've got a great diet, mm -hmm. but they're still not doing well, right? Then you've got to start looking at other things. It's like, this isn't a matter of throwing a bunch of supplements at them or, or, um, or looking, look, you've got to look deeper. You've got to really begin to understand, you know, what's the source of this? Where is the dysfunction really lying? And the nervous system will, will really help unravel that for you uh, in, a, in a quite beautiful way. And David spoke to this, but, um, you know, a lot of times patients come in. We do a pretty thorough intake with our patients, but they don't always tell you everything. And, uh, and you know, sometimes in the process of doing this work on them, uh, you can, like David said, you can ask, them, well, do you have a problem here? And they go, yeah, how did you know that? And I said, I, did, I didn't mention that. And or it's a lot of times they just kind of, they've lived with this for so long, they just forgot about it, right? Um, but uh, uh, yeah, as far as getting a deeper understanding of what's going on, where it's coming from, but you're, you're exactly right. I mean, you know, the, the body's so amazingly designed, I think, that, um, you know, it'll always let you know when there's something wrong. Mm -hmm. That's what pain or all these others, that's what symptoms are really about. They're really, your body's trying to get your attention about something. And yet we want to get rid of them as soon as possible, you know. And look, I'm the same way. When I don't feel good, I want to feel better right now, you know. Yeah. But uh, what I've, I've come to respect that, that that intelligence, it isn't random. It knows what it's doing when it's when there's a symptom pattern that, is showing up there's something going on and to, to get to the bottom of that you know i don't think there's a perfect system out there for it but i i know that uh, the nis work is, has helped me immensely in in understanding that better well and jim <clears throat> nis works along four major groups right we have yeah. neurologic yeah pathologic emotional and physiologic exactly so, you know so to answer your question nick you know i would say let's say somebody comes in like jim saying their diet's great uh, but they're having low back pain and where would nis help this person well it's the signaling dysfunction maybe that signal like i give the analogy jim liked like this analogy you know when we give a when we, when we give a chiropractic adjustment it's like popping the breaker we're yeah. popping the breaker on your house we're getting the power to turn back on or reestablishing that communication but sometimes the bigger question is why is that breaker keep overloading over and over and over? And that's where this signal failure comes into place. There, there's a complete loss from the brain on that circuit and you're just not having any restoration. And what NIS does is it helps us find out where that circuit's popped and our job is to integrate. Like Jim saying, we tap on the head, we find the right points and we turn the circuit back on. So it's really just getting the power turned back on. And for some people that maybe have not been successful, with certain things, and I have a personal story I'll share in a little bit, uh, this may just get you that next step further in your healing that you just have not gotten because you don't have that circuit turned on. Yeah. If that answers your question, Nick. Mm -hmm. Yeah, big time. That's, that's really helpful. So, Jim, I really want to talk about some of the awesome cases that you've had come in. Uh, you did share one at the last uh, conference I was at with you, but I'm sure you have many stories, but I really like to just talk about some cases of stuff that you see and, and that you've been successful with. Uh, so people are aware of the power of, of what NIS brings. Yeah. One that, one that I was just thinking about uh, before I got on the call. Uh, and, and the reason I was thinking about it is because it just had such a big impact on me. And it was a, it was a 17 year old girl uh, who had pretty severe learning disabilities. Um, and uh, she, you know, she was on what in school down here, they call it an IEP, which is where she had, she had, you know, she, she could be in the regular classroom, but she needed a lot of extra help. Uh, she had trouble reading. She had a lot of trouble with math. Um, and she was very, like, socially, I mean, she, it was very hard for her to interact socially with, other, with the other kids. So you know what happens there. I mean, she, 
you know, kids are just relentless that way. They'll, they'll pick out somebody like that. And, and, uh, but, and so she was, she was really struggling. Her mom bought her in and, um, and, and, and I asked showed us that she actually had some disconnects between different areas of her brain, the right and left side of her brain, right? The, the areas that just weren't firing with each other. And um, so we did a session on her and, um, and they came back about two weeks later and, and she was like a different kid. I mean, she was smiling and she was engaging with me. And I said, well, tell me what happened after, after you were here last time. And her mom, her mom said, do you want to, do you want to tell him? And she kind of shook her head. No. And so her mom said, well, we got, so we were out near the San Juan Islands. So a lot of people, we get a lot of people who come by ferry to see us, but she said, we got back to go home. We got on the ferry and uh, she said, the first thing that happened was when we left your office, normally this kid would not know left from right. Right. It was very hard for her to distinguish left from right. And she asked her daughter, she said, which way do we need to turn to go to the ferry? And she goes, right. And she said that was a first clue that something had changed on her. And when she got back on the ferry, she said normally it would take her about three hours to do her math homework. And they were done before they got home, which was like a 40 minute ferry ride. Wow. Right. That's awesome. So, uh, and this kid's just continue. And, and the reason I bring it up is that, that she just, she just went out on her first date with a boy. Right. So her life has just changed. I mean, she's, she's, she feels like a normal kid again and she can read and she can do math and she can, uh, and she's, you know, she's got friends whereas before she was always so shy and so uh, self-conscious about her, her ability to, to process information. Right. And uh, I shared this story with Dr. Phillips. He said, well, it's very simple. She's, you've given her her confidence back. Hmm. Right. And so that, that, you know, that was, that was a, a, a dramatic example. Uh, but we see, uh, gosh, we see everything from uh, autoimmune conditions turn around and get better to um, definitely learning disabilities in kids. Uh, I just had a kid um, come in and he's got some behavioral issues and his mom's been everywhere with him and they had done uh they'd had his neurotransmitters tested and his neurotransmitters were like super low especially his dopamine and his serotonin and his gaba and um so after i did two sessions of nis and she noticed right away a big change in his behavior but they had his just recently had his neurotransmitters retested and they're back up in normal range right it was just a question of getting the brain to start producing those neurotransmitters again. So can uh, you talk about that, Jim? Cause we've had some, <clears throat> some conversations on some of the research that's been done with NIS on they've done labs pre and post and actually yeah. shown changes after NIS treatments yeah. on labs. Yeah, we've seen it. We've seen it uh, in our office. Well, I just had a woman. Here's another, here's an example. A woman came in, about two months ago, she had um, her thyroid uh, numbers were like insane. Like her TSH was like 14 or 15, something. That's just way off the, the chart, right? And so they, her doctor just kept upping her, her Synthroid, right? Well, she wasn't getting any better. And uh, we treated her a couple times NIS. It turned out it wasn't her thyroid gland. Of course, it was her pituitary and hypothalamus was the issue. And within two weeks, her, num her, her TSH dropped in half. Now, we're getting ready to do another test. I expect her to be down in normal range. So she went from 16 to 7, and I, I expect now that she'll come down in normal range after her next test. But, um, uh, yeah, so to see those kind of changes is a real confirmation. Dr. Phillips has a lot of, 
he does a lot of lab testing. He does a lot of, um, he, he does especially a lot of check pre and post blood pressure checks on people. And, uh, cause he, he's, he's, he's really big on getting cardiac function optimized. So, uh, yeah, so we definitely see the physiological changes. That's, that's huge for people to hear. I mean, if, if you're an outsider, I got a chance to watch David perform some miracles at a, at a men's camp that we went to. He had like, yeah. I don't know how many people did you work on, like 30 people. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, I may, buddy who does this magic work? Uh, <laughs> next year I may have to open a clinic. Uh, but he's so busy. Uh, we'll just, we'll tag team David. Yeah, there we go. Have to, you're have to. Yeah. I mean, so many people were, were coming up to you and just getting, getting help done. And to hear that there's such a profound biochemical shift and again, like I said, me being an outsider, watching this happen, it's like muscle test, tap, 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 do, do, do. Yeah. Like it's like literally like they're typing onto a computer, your keyboard being your body, and then all this stuff changes, and they come out going, "Wow!" I've, like there's a there's a literally a man who reached out to me after the camp and said, "I don't know what your buddy did, but whatever <laughs> you did, I haven't felt this good in thirty some odd years." Wow. I'm, I would be willing to go fly down to go see him. He lives like I don't know, 20 or 10 states over. And he said, if it wasn't for the fact that I found someone uh, nearby, I would be flying to his clinic to get this work yeah. done. Because, <laughs> I mean, again, being on the outside, seeing this happen, it's, it, looks like, it looks like you're typing on someone's body computer. But to hear that those physiological changes happen that immediately, I mean – People, you need to look into this information. This is this is a profound tool that. Um, next time I'm see you, I see you both. I'm, I'm you know, I'm gonna lie down and get the treatment done myself. Yeah, well, and you gotta come. You gotta learn this. I know, and I gotta learn it too. I know it's it's true, but please, like, yeah, some more information on on that is be so helpful for people because it, it it's really it's fascinating to watch, and it's and it's fascinating to to see it happen and to get these the the feedback. And then, and then for you, David, too, like, what did it feel like when you first had this? Because, you know, you've done muscle testing for a while and it'd be great to hear, you know, your, your experience. So I got, yeah, I wanted to give my own little personal story. So like I said, I've been doing applied kinesiology for like 12 years and mostly just mapping the body, mostly downstream, right? Mm -hmm. And it's very effective to help me know where to adjust. And if it's a fascial thing that I need to address, or maybe there's organ referral or little things like that. But, you know, when I saw <clears throat> my first experience with NIS was Jim came up to me, or actually Candace, Jim's wife, came up to us and said, hey, I'm going to have Jim work on Clarissa. Clarissa is my wife for any of the listeners. And so, you know, Jim starts working on Clarissa. And immediately when I'm watching Jim, just because of my experience with, with muscle testing, I was like, holy crap, what is this guy doing? And, as he, and honestly, as I'm watching him do it, Every time he cleared a screen on Clarissa, because I'm so sensitive to energy, I could feel her shift in the room every single time he was clearing her. He was clearing her. And she's sensitive too. She could feel it. So I'm feeling like these massive explosions of her just clearing, you know, as he's working on her. And I'm, I'm just following along and following along. And I mean, a lot of these points that he's holding, they're on the brain. I have no idea what it was at that point. But I'm just so blown away and I could connect it right away. So then he works on me, and here's my story. So I blew out my back probably about 10 years ago, and with chiropractic, I probably got it to maybe a 3-4, and that was about all I thought I would ever get. Uh, did some peptide injections, a lot of fasting, other things, got it down to maybe like a 1-2, a 3 at the worst, but I always felt like there was always just something there at L5-S1, just one of these chronic deals, that, like, kind of like Jim was speaking to, just always there. So Jim works on me. And as he's running through, he, he does a couple screens. And literally, and this is what our patients tell us. Jim's probably going to second that. When you get up off the table and something's cleared, it almost feels like the body just lets go yeah. in that instant. Mm -hmm. And that's what everybody will describe it. They're like, it just feels like it just went poof, like the body just let go. Like, like it was holding on to something and it just decided to say, meh. I'm done. And that's what it feels like when the circuit turns back on. And I felt it right away when Jim reset me. And literally from that moment, my back has not hurt one incy bit. 
Wow. I have not been between a one and a three. And for me that day, that was enough. I mean, it was enough just to watch him work on my wife. But for me to have that done to me and feel it in that instant and be like, oh, my gosh, everything needs to take place at the brain, not the body. I need to work upstairs with everything, not downstream. And that was enough for me. I told Jim that day, I was like, buddy, sign me up. I'm coming to learn this stuff. <laughs> and I think that was in November, and I had to wait till like June before I could go and learn this, or May, I think it was. Wow. So I was chomping at the bit. But uh, just so powerful with my understanding of the body and muscle testing and everything. But man, the results I get now as a practitioner with my patients – is nothing short of, of amazing, man. I mean, I'm, I'm able to get on another level of healing that I was never able to touch as a practitioner before without NIS. And I considered myself a really good adjuster and muscle tester with a pike kinesiology, but, but buddy, you know, that there are many thanks, Jim. I mean, I wouldn't be doing this work if it wasn't for you. And I really hope that we can get this message out to as many other doctors as possible because we need more people doing this work uh, I hear that from my patients every day. They're like, how come nobody's doing this? How come there aren't more doctors doing this? But can you share that, Jim, real quick about outside of the U.S., how much this is used and who it's yeah. used by? And you know, it's, it's been interesting. It's been, a, it, it's been a bit of an uphill slog uh, getting chiropractors uh, – getting chiropractors past that idea that, that maybe there's a, another aspect to working with the nervous system other than the spinal adjustment. And again, I, I'm, I don't, I, I don't want to denigrate what anybody else does because it, it can be powerful, but there's a whole nother level that we can go to. Right. And, and that's what the brain understands. And, uh, but it's a, it's a paradigm shift, David. That's, that's really the issue. And, uh, and, and, uh, but, but yeah, he has, he, so he's from New Zealand, Dr. Phillips is, and he's, he has quite a few, quite a few chiropractors, DOs, uh, in New Zealand and Australia doing this work, but he's really, uh, uh, got a big following in Germany, which I find interesting, right? He's got about a hundred and 50 German MDs who have embraced this work. Uh, everything from anesthesiologists to pediatricians to orthopedic surgeons uh, who have really uh, taken this work on and, and embraced it. And he's got, a, he's got a very big following there. So he'll be teaching over there uh, in just a few weeks uh, to the German doctors. Um, and, and the Germans are... It's interesting talking to those guys. They're way ahead of us in their ideas in healthcare. You know, this is why I love Dr. Pampa because I think, you know, he's bringing us, he's bringing us forward in a, in a huge way in our understanding of what's really going on with people. But, um, you know, the, like one of the Germans I talked to, the German doctors I talked to, um, he said, I think that the way you guys like treat cancer is barbaric. And uh, I said, well, I'd have to agree with that, you know, but they're, they're way ahead of us on things like immunotherapy and other, other, you know, uh, other ways to, 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 to treat uh, cancer. And um, so, you know, it's just, again, they've, they're not so driven uh, pharmaceutically like we are here. Uh, so I think that's a big part of it, but, um, uh, yeah, they've been able to really take this on and, and run with it over there. So that's, it's interesting talking to those guys. What's you'd appreciate this cause they are, you know, the Germans are so damn precise. So like if you're working on one of them and you're not exactly on the right contact point, they'll let you know. It's like, Oh no, it's a, it's a quarter inch over. You know? <laughs> it's like, okay. You know, you, you stressed that when you trained me, but it's yeah. absolutely right. I yeah. mean, you need to be very on point with all those points or it can throw the work off a little bit. But just shows you how almost surgical in nature this work is, right? We're working with the nervous system. You have to be right on each of these points as we're working our way through. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, no, it's, it's fascinating stuff. And 
uh, and the th other thing I really like about it is that it's still, it's an evolving system. So Dr. Phillips continues to research. Uh, and uh, so I've really watched this whole thing evolve dramatically in the last, oh, even four or five years. He's made some big leaps forward with this work um, and his understanding, right? He's like, uh, he, we were at a seminar in 2016 and he goes, I have a confession to make. He said, I've, I've missed a big piece of what's going on in the nervous system. And uh, so he's not willing to, he's not unwilling to admit that he doesn't know everything by a long shot. So, and I appreciate that. Well, and I love that the medicine is, like you're saying, it's constantly expanding. It's not like this technique where it's already been set in stone and it's never improved. Like you're saying, he's just constantly making it better and better and better and better. Yeah. Uh, you know, one of the short the stories you shared with us about the woman with the brain issue, about yeah. how you didn't even have that info four or five years previous, but then you learned new stuff and that was able to help her yes. on her journey. So, I mean, I think that's great. There's always more to learn with this stuff. I'll be going to master's like we're talking next year. So that's exciting, man. Yeah. So Jim, can you tell our listeners, especially for any doctors listening, where can they find NIS to maybe come do a seminar or get started? And then how does all that work? And then how about our listeners that possibly want to have this done? Where can they find you? What's the best space to find you? Okay. Well, I'll give you, so the seminar site for the U S is, uh, is www.nisusaseminars.com. And that'll give you a listing of now we haven't even posted our, we just got done teaching our seminars for the year. So we'll be posting our 2020 dates on there soon, as soon as we get them all figured out. But you can go on there and just send us a, a, a contact form and we'll put you on a list if you're interested so that as soon as we've got dates, they'll, they'll, uh, we'll send that out to you. Um, there's also the international uh, site, which is www.neurolinkglobal, all one word, dot com. That's Dr. Phillips' site in New Zealand. Quite a bit of information on there as well. Also, there on, on both of those sites, there are practitioner directories. So people who have... Um, people who have attended seminars and have done a proficiency exam are, so you should be listed on there now, I think. I'm awesome. not sure how that works. Uh, but uh, also my website, so I practice in Anacortes, Washington. I'm just down the road from Nick. And, uh, and my website is uh, www.fidalgo Island Health Center, all one word. It's F-I-D-A-L-G-O Island Health Center. And... Uh, and you'll also see some links to Neuralink or to NIS that was originally called Neuralink uh, on there. There's also a phone number you can call for information. It's area code 360-610-9949. And uh, uh, our staff will be help, happy to answer questions about seminars and, that, and, and how you can get involved with this work. So... And I'll for sure put all that in the show notes, Jim, so okay. people can have those links and that phone number as well. That's great. Mm. Nick, you got anything you, else you want to ask, Jim? Uh, yeah, I mean, the, the fact is, is that this, this does work. This is, you know, I think we've all come to realize that diet's not enough, you know, just moving isn't enough. The world we live in is a lot more complex than it was 30, 40, 50 years ago. Yeah. And it's no surprise that, there's an evolution of health healthcare into more some of the, the more energy type medicine and, and the role that it's having and just getting feedback to, that it's changing your biochemical pathways in your body is changing you physically, emotionally. Um, like you mentioned that the girl is feeling more confident. I mean, yeah. there are things that are needed in the world that we live in. And so it's us as doctors do have to take upon ourselves to, to find this information, to look, you know, and for patients to know that there's options that are out there. So I'm blessed to know you both. I mean, I got easy access to it and I'm, <laughs> I'm looking forward to learning it myself. And uh, so uh, thank you for doing all the work that you do. That, that's, that's what I have to say. 
Well, you know, it's, it's, it, it, to me, it's, uh, it's, it's what I love to do and, and uh, it's endlessly fascinating, right? I mean, you know, it's the old cliche of the more, the more, you know, the more you don't know, the more, you know, you don't know, right? <laughs> Is so, that the truth? <laughs> uh, but, you know, I tell you, it's been, it's been just a, a, an absolute joy getting to know both of you and all the other people who we've met through uh, Dr. Pampa's group and, uh, it's just so wonderful to know that there's people out there who are genuinely interested in helping other people get well. And Lord knows we need that. <laughs> I mean, the the society is, uh, we need all the help we can get out there, right? So uh, I say, you know, let's just keep moving in a direction that's that's going to serve, serve people and, and improve their health. So love it. Amen, brother. Jim, thank you so much, man. I mean, thank you for coming on and sharing with us today. And again, thank you for me. Ugh, many, many thanks, brother, for exposing yeah. me to NIS and, and the journey it's taken me on and the lives of people it's already touching. Um, and uh, looking forward to seeing you soon, man. I'll see you in the fall here in November, at the next Correct. conference. Yes, you will. And thank you so much. Uh, it's been a real privilege, guys. Thanks, guys. Awesome. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed today's podcast, please be sure to subscribe to the Dr. Dads and share with your family and friends. You can also follow and interact with Dr. Nick and Dr. David on Facebook and Instagram for a daily dose of inspiration and the latest in health and wellness. Be well.